Hello? Hello? Hey there. Hello. Hi. All right, we'll just wait a, like a couple minutes to get going. Uh, ben, are you out there? I was not. Uh, I think that Ben is actually at the, uh, the conference over here in Europe at OSS Summit. So I think that he's left me to, uh, to chair the meeting today. We'll give it a, a minute or two for more folks to join and then we'll get going. Hey, Alex, are you out there? Hi folks, this is uh, Steve Watt uh, joining. Um, Alex Kierkop, um sends his regrets uh, to his wedding anniversary and can't make it, but um, he did uh, send out a, uh, a draft of the side deck for some of the landscape stuff that we talked about, um, which Clint will talk about a little more today um, on the meeting. Uh, we, well, Clint will be talking about the accompanying white paper, but um, so just check your inbox for um, sort of the emerging categories that we're thinking of. Hey Steve, uh, can you hear me out there? We can. All right. Sorry about the uh, the technical difficulties. I'm over here in Europe, so sometimes a bit it's a bit challenging. <laughs> All right. So uh, welcome everyone to the meeting. Uh, ben asked me to to chair it today because he is uh, he's got some responsibilities for MesosCon, which is starting tonight and tomorrow uh, over here in Prague. Um, there's a couple things on the agenda that we want to try to cover today and uh, you know, as usual there's opportunity for other, others to add items to the, the end of the agenda if there's other things that uh, you feel like we want to talk about. Uh, the two things that we have here that we can jump into, I can look to see if Alex is on the call. Uh, Alex, are you out there? No, Alex, Alex sends his regrets. Um, I just said that before, right before you joined, but uh, he, it's his wedding anniversary so he's not on. But I didn't okay. tell folks about the, the deck that he sent out. 
Okay. Uh, maybe we'll take a second then and, and take a look at some of those slides and, and get some feedback from the group on, on what our thoughts are based on uh, the last meeting. Um, he sent out the deck. I'm just clicking on that link. And it looks like he updated starting on slide five through six and seven. Have, has anyone had a chance to take a look at that yet? No? Okay. Um, yeah, I have obviously, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you think, Steve? Yeah. Um, Can we talk about them now or do you want to talk about them later? Share the screen or no? What was that? I was just wondering if you wanted to share the screen and we could see the slides if you wanted to talk about them or do you want to do that offline? Yeah, I, um, I'm because I'm over in Europe. I'm not going to share mine off because I'm not sure what the bandwidth is going to be like. Um, I don't, I don't mind. I clicked on. You can do that. If, do you want to do that, Steve? Yeah, sure. Uh, first time I tried on sharing on Zoom, so let's see how this goes. But, <laughs> um, all right. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to sort of, since some of you folks probably haven't even seen this deck before, like. This is work in progress. Um, um, so definitely like don't get too wound up if you don't like what you see something, you know, ample means to change it. Um, but you know, slide two is just basically the proposal to create this landscape as it was originally teed up. And then um, we met um, on October the 11th to basically um, talk about in, in the working group, like some of the different patterns that um, we want to reflect in this landscape. So you sort of see some notes that Alex took here on slide three and four, or maybe it was Clint that took these notes. I'm not, maybe it was Clint, I think. Um, and, then, um, and then on slide five is sort of the, the breakdown of the patterns. Now, um, it's kind of tricky because um, as we started talking about these things, we noticed that like, um, there's like multiple dimensions. Like we think it's important to list out like what storage systems are like file block and object, but like some things are file and uh, have an API that allows dynamic uh, provisioning. Some things are file and don't do that. Some things are block that do do that. Some things are block that don't do that. So it's like how to like represent these things in simple categories is going to be kind of tricky. Um, cause there's a lot of like Venn diagram overlap stuff going on. Um, but, but here are some of the key patterns, right? And so, um, slide five is it's interoperable, which basically means there's been some work done with the product or project to integrate it with a CO such that a CO can use the backend storage system. Um, and that, you know, basic interoperability would probably be, um, you know, you can create a volume. Um, in the storage system, and then you can use the volume with a container running in the CO. Um, now, notice I didn't say dynamic provisioning, right? Because that's a sort of a separate thing, right? And so um, self-service is sort of like the next improvement upon that, I would say, where basically your storage system exposes an API, an interface that allows... Um, the CO to dynamically provision volumes from that, right? So you don't have to go talk to a storage administrator to get a volume created, right? So that's the difference between the first two. Um, and then interface um, is basically like the, uh, you know, uh, for Kubernetes, it's like the persistent volume framework. It's sort of uh, a volume plugin API, things like that, that, um, and then, eventually like CSI, right? So that, that, that's what we mean, I think, when we're saying interface here. Um, and then there's sort of API framework tools. So um, this is like the, an easy way to think of this is sort of Rex Ray, something that can maybe take something that's not self-service and like sit in between it and the CO and the API framework knows how to talk to the CO and vice versa and can sort of expose access to that backend storage platform in a way that is self-service. Um, so I think there's a category there. 
And then, um, and then the next one is sort of the, so that's all like consumption, right? So like how storage is consumed from within the container orchestrator. Um, the next one is sort of the actual storage platform itself, right? So historically storage platforms have been separate adjacent clusters to container orchestrators. So they, they sit next to them or so, somewhere where they can be reached across the network. Um, and so, um, so that's one pattern, right? Where they're sort of adjacent. And then there's another pattern where they're actually containerized and running in the container orchestrator itself. Right, so things like you know Portworks, storage OS, um, Red Hat Container Native Storage, you know Gluster Kubernetes, etc. So wanted to call, call out that sort of more um, runtime deployment different difference there, and then um, yeah, storage access method. Um, not quite sure. Clint, do you have any comment on, on that? Because I think we kind of covered the consumption stuff already in the other patterns. I'm not quite sure how this bullet is different. Yeah, I think that that had to do with whether um, it's being accessed by way of a, like a kernel module or a NAS or iSCSI or fiber channel or something like that. Got it. Um, yeah. yeah. Like the protocol. All right. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, those are the macro patterns. Um, you know, the next slides, five, six, and seven, basically provide sort of visual representations of them, but I've sort of, um, you know, gone through all of this. Um, the, the big thing, as I said before, is, you know, we've got to be able to overlay like a storage system, which of those patterns it supports and whether it's file block or object. And, uh, that, that is it. That's the five minute whirlwind tour. <laughs> that was fantastic, okay. Steve. Thank you for that. Uh, anybody have any, uh, any comments about the, what you saw there or heard? No, thank you. Does anyone think like we're missing something really important? I'm, I'm thinking uh, of the characteristics and, for example, why a cloud based database. Not cannot be defined as cloud native storage as well. So, what's the definition of how to exclude something out or in? Yeah, that's that's an interesting point. Um, you know, when I think about the um, the cloud native storage, I think of it as a a low level capability, uh, similar to the compute resources and the network resources and like storage is that other low level compute resource. And, you know, that has more to do with writing files to file systems and writing blocks to LBA devices. Uh, when I think about what you're talking about, it, it has to do with something that's more structured in format. Uh, and something that is happening at a application level where it's not sending using the kernel specifically to do like the data stuff You know, it's actually using the kernel to use networking and it's probably sending that off to a cloud provider That's running a you know long-running SQL instance or you know, it's running sending, you know log based data and so I, I see that as a very valid use case, but I don't know that we need to capture that like in terms of the goals of the storage working group uh, I don't know that we need to capture that in the short term, but we could bookmark it to say, hey, this area of, you know, maybe it's cloud native data services or cloud native data storage. Uh, these, these, it's an important area to, to talk about and classify. I'd just add that there's also a, an existing database and data analytics um, in the cloud native landscape. So I'm just going to put it in the chat here. Um, and, uh, and it looks like Ardalon's wanting a link to the doc. Um, this is the link to the doc. Um, oh, that's the second one's the link to the doc. But um, yeah, so the other thing is, um, so I agree with everything Clint said, um, that this is sort of the very primitive layer. And I think this is the layer that database systems would use. Um, so, you know, presumably your database is backed by some sort of, if it's a distributed database uh, like Cassandra or something, each node's backed by block or file on block. Um, yeah, so but it doesn't have to be. Can you say that one more time? It doesn't have to be. So you, you couldn't 
assume that every database is based on a file system or based on a block storage. That database is, you, eventually they're saving their data on a block device, okay? So, because everything at the end is stored on a block device or in memory. So I wouldn't include data services such as a NoSQL database, for example, a Cosmos DB from a Azure or DynamoDB from Amazon and others, which are data services which can save your state. So if the, the idea is that you need some place to save the state of the application or of a, a container, then you cannot exclude all the other data services. You, I do agree that the main part of the storage subsystems is, as usually does, it's, it's a file and a SCSI fiber channel kind of a block systems. But the other ones is just a different type uh, of storing your information within it. Yeah. And I don't agree. I don't disagree with that. Uh, I think that capturing, say, data services and the interfaces and the tools and the, the methods of doing those, along with the the key semantics that Steve, that Steve described it as, is a difficult thing to do in in one diagram and one paper and have it all make sense. I feel like we need to bite off you know chunks uh, and try to des describe you know certain parts of the landscape individually because they are they are pretty different. Yeah, I, I think yeah, one, 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 one thing that might be helpful is that there is obviously a larger class of services and systems that are, are needed for stateful workloads. Typically when people say storage, so I don't think they mean all stateful workloads, that includes time database, time series databases and databases in general, log, log databases and all this other stuff. When I think storage is typically just a lower, lower level infrastructure, like block, file, and object. Yeah. That, that's, uh, so, so I don't think the focus here is general stateful workloads, but more just the storage piece, which is a subset of all stateful. Yeah, and, and I feel like it, part of this is like the background that you come from. Uh, you know, if you came from the storage world, then I think you're you know, pretty aligned to calling everything, you know, primitive wise, and you know, file and, and LBA wise, like just you know, core storage. And if you come from you know, the cloud world, then things are other things. You know, outside of that, are storage as well. Um, so I think it's something that we need to make sure we define clearly as we, you know, write the stuff and create our landscapes. But I, I think also if if you look at the set of services each of the large public cloud vendors provide, they'll put, you know. Um, file block and object under storage services, and then they have a separate section around database and database services. Um, yeah. I, I think it's actually a com common taxonomy of, of, you know, between storage and, and the general stateful stuff. Okay. Cool. Yeah, maybe another dimension is sort of, it's all persistence, but this is, you know, storage is a much less structured, lower level form of persistence than I say a database. Yeah. It's less opinionated for sure. Databases start to get a lot of, you know, API and CRUD semantics and all sorts of stuff. Um, so so I, I think certainly this level of storage is, is less opinionated. Can yeah. I just ask who was asking the original question? I believe it was Orit. Yeah, it was me. Okay, thanks. Nice to meet you, Orit. I'm Steve. <laughs> nice to meet you. And it did come from a storage background, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I think the so we were. I think Steve, you were asking a question if anything was missing. Is anybody else uh, want to add anything that we feels missing from, uh, from the landscape? All right. So do, do, I guess one question for me is: Do we have a proposed uh, landscape that we want to bring, take back to the TFC? Well, I think that what we were trying to do first is, and actually let me take a step back. We've got a, um, a meeting or we've got a slot with the TOC on November 14th uh, to give them an update from the SWG, from our working groups. Uh, there's, I think, two things that we can do that we are, are being, uh, were basically asked of us at the last update that happened and a month or two back. Uh, one is that we work on a, um, a landscape which 
think includes the classification, but also includes, you know, where certain players fit. So kind of an expansion of what they currently have as a landscape. And then the second thing is a, a white paper that helps everybody understand, you know, why that landscape was put together and how things interact and you know, how things are, you know, why things were done. So I think those are our two deliverables that we, we have to, um, we have to work on. So in terms of this landscape, I think if everybody's, I think we should probably review the slides, um, you know, after this meeting again. Uh, but if everybody's in agreement of how this stuff lays out, that we should start to classify and, and kind of bring over examples of platforms or certain platforms to actually start putting in that landscape so that we can present that to the TOC. Okay. Yeah, like the first thing is just creating the categories and then I think agreeing on what the categories should be and then the next steps like filling them in. Yep. Sounds like we've got through the first step though. <laughs> yep, I think that's some progress, so. All right, uh, anybody else have any, any comments about that? Nope. Okay, so let's move on to the, uh, to the next one. So next on the agenda is to talk about uh, this white paper. Um, this is something that uh, the, the TOC is requesting of us. There's a, a similar white paper that, that the serverless uh, working group put together. And you know, it's something that I think has helped the TOC understand the space a bit more and understand uh, or gives them better understanding of how to you know, make decisions in the space to help support the CNCF. Uh, so we've been asked as well to put together a storage white paper. And the idea behind this is to help educate and it's also to help describe why the landscape was put together how it was. So I took a first stab at this uh, to, to start to build out like a, a pretty high level structure, uh, which follows on from uh, what we've been talking about in these working groups and also what uh, was put together by Alex on some of those slides in the landscape. Uh, I know that you know, the, everybody on the call hasn't had a chance to, to look through this whole thing. Um, but I, I guess I'll, I'll open it up to, to anybody who has had a chance to look through the structure. Um, and I think the, the goal for this meeting for the session is probably to, to get people to, to actually sign up to, to help fill out some of these sections or help reorganize or just you know, generally comment on, uh, you know, what you feel about what you're seeing. So, does anyone, uh, anyone have any feedback based on what you have here in, in front of you or, um, or anything? Uh, are you sharing something? Because you said in front of you, but just want to make oh, sure. It's, uh, no, it's on the agenda. And I, I, okay. Steve, I don't know if you can share that off. Yeah, I can share it. Hold on a second. I have not you. had a chance to look at it, but I, I will. Okay. Uh, share screen. Um, yep. Okay, so here we go. Clint, just tell me, you know, so it's, I think it's yeah. abstract that like tees up what this thing is about. Um, yep. Got your contributors, got your, your damn Clint, you put a lot of work into this. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm like, look, this, uh, wow. Wow. This is the first time I've seen it too, so. Okay, yeah, I definitely didn't give the group enough time to, to comment on it, so. Um, I'll, I'll briefly walk through pieces of this at a high level, and then uh, we can, actually, we probably need to just get some volunteers after this call so that we can sign up and iterate on it uh, to hopefully get it done and agreed upon by uh, the TOC. But at a, at a high level, you know, it, it, the goal is to carve out, you know, what is cloud, cloud native storage? Let's define the category. Uh, and define the classifications, like I said, you know, to help understand why the landscape was put together. Uh, so it starts out to say, what is uh, cloud native storage? Uh, it should answer the question of why is it important? And it should answer the question of like, what types of storage are relevant? Uh, it gets into this, the next section gets into this, um, you know, how Alex had, had talked about the consumer and provider side of uh, storage platforms. 
So we really start with the consumer side and we set it up to talk about the different use cases. So whether it's traditional applications like Postgres, whether it's modern applications like Cassandra, or wh whether it's even like short running applications that are like batch jobs. So uh, it sets up to, to say, you know, why is it important with these use cases? Uh, can you go up just a little bit, Steve? And then the next section is talking about the primary functions. And this is where we break out the two key things that the work group had defined. One being, I think the, the core uh, reason why we'll, call, why we'll call something cloud native storage, which is uh, that it can be interoperable or it's orchestrated volumes. Uh, that idea that you can just really attach, detach on demand to volumes that are requested. And then it sets up the, the next piece of you know, cloud native storage, which is, uh, can you self-consume uh, by way of the APIs and can you give like a Kubernetes or a, a CO consumer the ability to define their own volumes? Uh, so it describes those, those two things. Then it gets into the where we are today, like how is the ecosystem in terms of uh, extensibility? So it talks about in-tree volume plugins, such as the things that Kubernetes provides. Then it'll talk about out-of-tree volumes, such as volume plugins, such as uh, Docker volume driver and CSI. Uh, and then it'll get into the local uh, capabilities that the COs provide for local file systems, et cetera. Uh, then it steps into the components section where we actually break out uh, the individual pieces of the landscape. Uh, so we set it up to say what, how our CO is gonna be consuming the functionality, like what does it actually look like when someone uses it. Then it gets into the interfaces and the platforms and the plugins and frameworks, et cetera. So there's a components section for the landscape. Um, and then the next section I think is kind of defines some of what can be in this then diagram. Like when we start to say, okay, you're, you're cloud native storage and you've got, you know, one of two capabilities, you know, you're orchestrated, you know, and your self consumption. And then there's certain capabilities which probably make you a stronger cloud native platform or that maybe certain applications are going to benefit from. Um, so I go through a bunch of the capabilities and, you know, this, this, all this stuff is up for us to discuss and make sure it's relevant and the right thing. Uh, but it lists out self-consumption, uh, throughput guarantees and limitations, uh, the responsiveness, like, you know, how quick is the API to attach and detach volumes, um, availability. So, you know, is my storage platform highly available? Um, elasticity of the resources I'm going to consume, the ability to have role-based access control, authorization, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think the capabilities basically just defines the strength of the cloud native platform and, you know, how many different use cases that it can be relevant for. Um, next page. And then we get into um, the requirements section. So these are dependencies to, to make a, a cloud native platform. Um, a plugin or an interface or a tool work, whether there's, or really a platform work, so whether there's host level dependencies that have to be satisfied, um, containerized tools that, that can be packaged to make plugins easy to operate. Then we get into the, the types of storage, so local remote, whether they have volumes or they're raw with LBA access, whether they're shared, layered, encrypted, um, and then the next section is the volume orchestration. So this is talking about describing what happens during the certain processes of attaching, detaching, and mounting, unmounting, et cetera. Uh, and then the, the kind of the final section of describing cloud native storage is uh, expectations for performance. So there's two, two ways to think about this. One is, um, you know, what is, if I'm using different platforms, like what's the attach detach performance? So how quickly should I expect these things to happen? And then the other is whether I, you know, for my create remove operations, how quickly should that stuff happen? So it's really the, just understanding from a control plane, you know, what my expe base expectations are across these types of platforms. And then the, the data plane basically says it shouldn't matter because uh, all this stuff is out of band and you should get native performance from the platform. So I think that, that kind of summarizes the, the section of defining cloud data storage. It says what it is, what are the two key fundamentals or features or functions, which is you know, lifecycle operations and orchestration, and then what are the different things that you can um, kind of understand it for to make it a stronger or weaker cloud data storage platform. Uh, and I'll stop for comment there. Any thoughts? Anything, anything missing or uh, any concerns about that? 
that's a lot of <coughs> excuse me that's a lot of stuff you put down um i'll just take it offline yeah. and, and read it but uh very cool stuff thank you yeah, yeah Clint, it looks super comprehensive like and it's it's really just a... nothing jumps out like it's uh Go ahead, Steve, sorry. you know it looks right on point actually like thanks for all this i think it's gonna make it really a lot simpler like just filling it in yep yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a straw man. Um, so I, I definitely want to have the feedback from everyone. Uh, the next section of the document gets into describing the uh, orchestrated storage platform or the cloud native storage platform, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think the, for this white paper, we would basically say that that area is still to be defined. I don't know what you guys think about that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, as far as like this, this to me is a little um, more than I initially envisioned, but um, I like it because it's like, it's it like sort of closes the loop. It's very comprehensive. Um, and frankly, like a lot of us are here at the CNCF storage working group because like, everybody's so confused about the space and we're trying to work together to make it clearer for our customers and our, you know, open source communities and stuff like that. And what I love about this is that like, just, just as actually another data point, right? Like I, I realized that we have journalists looking at the output from the, the, the CNCF um, deliverables. So we have journalists reading <laughs> the CS, CSI uh, spec and all the comments and stuff like that. So I think I'm hoping that like, um, for those of you that know me personally, I have this rant I go on about how few good articles I've ever seen about cloud native storage from the press, right? That they're usually mm -hmm. like massively incorrect. So I look at this and be like, good Lord, I hope somebody actually reads through this because it'll set them straight before they write anything. If our customers read this, it'll give them a very fair, unbiased view of the world. So I, I like it. And I also think like at the end, you know, just to come back to your original question, like I think that might be a place where um, we could uh, sort of, um, you know, to Orit's earlier point, maybe point to like, if you're looking for more persistence topics in general, you know, there's, I don't know if there is a database working group, maybe they should be, but you know, just point them to other parts of the landscape. And, and that's probably something important to do upfront in this as well as to sort of find scope here. Um, so that they know like right before, they don't have to read the whole document before they realize this thing isn't going to talk about databases, you know? Yep. I, uh, I totally agree. I think there's a good opt to do that. Um, so in terms of limiting the scope of this document and, you know, for the November 14th meeting, do you guys feel okay with focusing on the cloud native storage and those key semantics? Uh, and, you know, in terms of the orchestrated storage platform, I think we need to define what it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, in terms of the details that we get into it, into for it, I think that that feels like it's still to be determined. Um, yeah, are, are we what, what, one common point that I, that I have on this is that it might, might help just in terms of scoping this to start with a focus the white paper initially for the November 14th on a high level, kind of the lay of the land and just define some terminology and, and, and have a more detailed section to happen later. I don't know how we get through all of this through November 14th. Um, so may, maybe a two-stage two approach to this might help. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is, I, I don't think we should like, um, I think what we should do is like maybe take a pass at like um, this white paper, fill in like a lot of the, the non-contentious stuff. I think once we as a group start filling in the landscape, we're going to have debates about what category things should be in. And that's mm -hmm. going to put, put the high value content into the white paper around specifically, you know, the, the nuances around all this different stuff. So I think, yeah. and, and I, so I really feel like this, um, 
the, the landscape is a visual guide, but like the visual can only contain so much information, right? Like this is the, the background, the deeper, more nuanced, you know, context around the landscape. Yep. No, exactly. And I think that, you know, in terms of November 14th, I feel like the, the, the visual landscape that we give the TOC doesn't need to include like what we'd call the strength of the cloud native platform or whatever we want to define like those capabilities as. Uh, but we should basically say November 14th is just saying like who's, who's interoperable, who can be orchestrated and made use by cloud native storage or as a cloud native storage. Um, and then the, the white paper, I feel like we should, you know, ask people on the call to, to sign up for filling in some of what, you know, details and different parts of it. Uh, and then let's see what we get through and, you know, whatever we decide that isn't clear enough or isn't providing value or, you know, is going to confuse people, we'll just, will not include, uh, but make sure that we end up with a, a focused and, and clear uh, white paper for the, for the group. Is that fair? Cool. Yeah. So uh, we've only got one more of these meetings before the TOC, I believe. Uh, so I think that we need to set up some meetings for iteration on the, the paper itself. Um, so I, I think we could probably do this two, I think two, I think we need to do two things. One, I think we need to get folks to, after this call, take a peek at it and uh, maybe comment on certain areas that you wanna contribute to. Uh, and then two, um, decide on a, a time that we can, you know, as a subgroup, whoever's interested in contributing, uh, meet uh, a few times to, to make some progress on it. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I think, I think what we'll find is, um, you know, there's probably going to be a smaller subset of folks um, that have the time right now to contribute content. Yep. yep. So maybe as a follow-up, I'll send out a, um, uh, a scheduler, uh, to get everybody's feedback on when they can be available for a handful of meetings before our uh, before next week, and those that are interested in contributing and and commenting uh, can feel free to to join those and and uh, and help us fill this thing out. Uh, but in general, like feedback from everybody after this call, um, you know, with with just comments on the stock would be much appreciated. Uh, and then if you are interested in just start starting to work on it, like let me know and I'll add you as a uh, a writer for the doc. Thanks for, thanks for putting this together. Yep. Okay. You guys have uh, anything else you wanted to chat about from, uh, from this call? No? Uh, yeah, I just have a quick question. I think we talked a little bit about the, this last time is, is there a place somewhere written down what the charter of this working group is supposed to be? Like, is it to output the documents like you're doing right now and then the, the slides, but what's the, the, like, the mission statement of this thing? I'm kind of confused sometimes uh, what it is supposed to be. Maybe I'm the only one. Add me to. Yeah. So, so Ben is leading the, the, the storage working group and you know, the, the SWG was created um, as a kind of a subcommittee or subgroup of the TOC. Uh, the TOC is a technical oversight of the, of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So within the, within the CNCF, you've got the TOC, uh, which are just people who are uh, volunteering from the ecosystem who are thought leaders uh, who make decisions like technically about, what the CNCF foundation should be supporting. So that's one group. Then you've got a group which is um, the, the financial supporters, essentially the sponsors of the TOC, uh, and that's the governing board. Uh, and then you've got an end user committee within the TOC, within CNCF that uh, describes their use cases and kind of looks at what, what CNCF's doing and make, making sure it's going on the right path. So there's three, there's three groups. Uh, the, the TOC itself is the technical side again. It's from the, um, uh, the the volunteers, thought leaders in the industry. Uh, so there's a subgroup of that. And, and what happened was that 
last later last year we started talking about storage things to the TOC. And you know, among the TOC, there wasn't a high level of awareness about what was going on in the storage ecosystem. Uh, same thing for networking. So they decided to form these subcommittees called the, the, the networking working group, the storage working group, service working group. Uh, and these are another group of just volunteers that are you know, there to, to look at the ecosystem and talk amongst themselves and, and try to come to consensus to help advise the TOC on you know, what's going on in the ecosystem and make recommendations to the TOC. Um, so that's essentially what we're doing is, you know, we're here to, as industry experts, to, to try to classify and understand what's going on in the ecosystem, try to put together information to help, you know, educate everyone and grow the community. Uh, and to help the TOC make better decisions about you know projects that the CNCF can help sponsor to to grow the community. Um, yeah, I just is that clear? To, Go ahead. I just want to add to that, Clint, because um, so so the first thing is Luis, like work groups in the CNCF can be short short lived or long lived. So that was my first question, right? Like, what, what's our purpose, and are we short lived or long lived? So Ben answered like he envisions this group as being long lived. Um, there is some. Lengthy stuff to to get through around CSI and um, the you know the other thing Clint was saying that I think the TOC weren't so super aware is the the literally the amount of innovation in storage for cloud native is sort of counterintuitive so I don't th I think it was in a bit of their blind spot so because of all that innovation going on um, they there there's, there's probably quite a lot for us to need and continue to refine and talk about so it's long lived. Um, the second thing is governance, right? Like how does the governance work? You know, Clint um, laid that out, but like just more, more crudely put, like uh, Ben has the final say, right? Um, we inform Ben, but the WIC group sort of um, serves at Ben's pleasure for a more medieval <laughs> explanation. However, Ben's an incredibly busy dude. So um, Ben actually, so while, while technically the governance is laid out like that, um, he strongly weights the recommendations of our group. Our group is still very small right now. And um, the, so we don't really have a formal um, you know, way to determine consensus, but I think if we wanted to propose something to Ben, he'd be pretty amenable. But right now <clears throat> we've actually, there's just been a lot of, um, we've been picking sort of low hanging fruit, um, you know, and there's just been pretty widespread consensus on what, what to do and how to go about it. It's all been very reasonable. Does that help? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I think it would be great to have somewhere written down what the charter, like the, the goals are. Maybe part of this group, we can we have, have that somewhere. We have what a the, that. Right, so what we did is um, we, had a, we have a thread on the list where we sort of all brought up our questions and then Ben responded and said, okay, we'll talk about this at the next meeting. <laughs> and then that's where Ben basically ratified what just we said. Um, yeah. You can watch the recording, but I agree. It's pretty sucky to have people have to go watch a recording to know. Maybe we should just. Yeah, it definitely would be, should be better to have it documented. Yeah. I, th I think that, you know, everybody is you know, among all, companies and contributors are, are low on, on resources. And um, I think that what we really need to focus on is, I mean, I think Steve laid out very well, like what's going on and you know, what that governance is, but in the short term, like we really want to get some deliverables to the TOC. And then I think after this, uh, you know, I would definitely be amenable to making sure that we put more things down on paper. So, so everybody can understand, you know, what, what this SWG is all about. Cause I, I do think that like it should live in perpetuity. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff going on and I'm, I'm really happy to be able to collaborate with, with everybody from all kinds of different companies and places in this type of forum. Excellent. Thank you. Cool. Anybody else have any uh, comments? All right, so as an action, uh, please do check out the document. Uh, please do add, uh, add comments to certain areas if you want to be participate. Uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll open the distribution of the doc out or the editing rights. And uh, I'll also be sending out a, um, a scheduling invite to 
to see who's available during certain dates so we can have some follow-ups to, to make some progress on the dock. All right, thank you all very much. All right, bye. Bye. Sounds good, thanks. Bye.